assalamu alaikum and welcome back to the our online class this is the course analog and principles of communication systems here i am dr rishan kareem from ec department ceo of campus and this is the chapter titled amplitude modulation and demodulation specifically what we will cover in this chapter let's see move to the lecture contents so in specifically in this chapter we will cover in detail what is modulation index and what is the role of modulation index in modulation and how it affects the modulation so and the other topic would be the side band and the carrier power okay let's move on what is modulation index so modulation index why we use this and how we calculate this let's discuss so it is very important parameter for a successful detection or decoding of a signal transmitted signal so in case the modulation index is too low its level of modulation then modulation does not utilize the carrier efficiently it means that if you are transmitting the signal uh, modulating the signal and if your value of the modulation index is too low then it means you are not efficiently utilizing that carrier signal and in other case if it is too high then the carrier can become over modulated and causing side bands to extend out beyond the allowed bandwidth causing interference to the other user so when it is its value is too high then it will result in the interference with the other user so we need to uh, have a value which doesn't even uh, too low or to high so how we will calculate modulation index let's discuss this one first so modulation index is represented by mu and in mu how we calculate this is the ratio of the message signal peak value and the carrier signal amplitude right so mp over a for invariant detection case to be distortionless as i told you Uh, in case we didn't set, uh, didn't select the proper value of modulation index, then what would it result? It will bring the distortion. So to avoid the distortion, it means we need to have a distortionless transmission. We must have a mu value that satisfy that lies in the range from zero to one, right? Hence. the same condition holds for distortion as the modulation of an am by an invariant detector so if we use the invariant detector uh, in the coming slides we will see the detailed procedure how invariant detector works but i told you before uh, uh, about i briefly introduced it before in the last lecture it has the same condition so this condition is same for the am modulation the modulation of am signal as well if it doesn't satisfy this condition then there will be a distortion in the transmission and in other case if a is less than mp what does it mean if we will uh, put the value of a here which is less than this mp then we know that if denominator is less then it would result in high value of mu so mu will be greater than 1 and it we called it as a over modulation you must remember this term when we call it over modulation when mu is greater than 1 so in invariant detection will not be viable so synchronous modulation is used in this instead so what does it mean that uh, if we have a signal which is over modulated right this is the case and in this case we can't use invariant detection why uh, because there is a case when uh, as i already discussed this condition if this condition is not met then we can't implement invariant detection for the demodulation of a signal in this case we will move to the synchronous demodulation what is synchronous demodulation here in synchronous demodulation we need to independently generate the carrier at the receiver side so this is called the synchronous demodulation so let's move forward further for example message signals empty with non zero offset what does it mean it means that on some equation the message signal empty will have a non zero offset such that of maximum value m max 
and its minimum value m min are not symmetric. It means that, for example, you have a signal, look at this, and conventionally it has the peak signal like this one, right? So this is called a positive peak, which or we are naming it as a m max. And this one is the negative peak, which we are naming it as a m min minimum, right? M min. So they are saying that it is not symmetric. It means that in some scenarios, the signal m max value is different from the m min value. It means that its signal something looks like that, high and low. Now you can clearly see the difference. This value is higher, right? And this value is low, right? So in this case, how to calculate the modulation index? This is not the symmetric case. That is m meaning m is not equal to m max. In valve detection, still remain distortionless. In this case, the valve detection is possible still. If mu is greater or equal to zero or less or equal to one. However, the mu is not just calculated by putting MP over A here. Here the, the formula will be difference. M max minus M min, like this one, M max minus M min, right? Or in divided by two A plus M max plus M min. So you need to remember this formula because uh, this can be a scenario where maximum and the minimum are not symmetric. In this case, modulation index is used. This equation is used to calculate the modulation index of the AM signal. Okay, let's move. This is an example to explain uh, how, uh, what is the effect of a modulation index on the signal if we vary the value of modulation index. Okay, example is sketch phi amt it means that sketch the amplitude modulated signal right for a modulation in this is we have a two cases u is equal to 0.5 mu is equal to 1 so for these two cases a is 0.5 b is 1 we need to sketch the phi am when empty when the given message signal is b cos omega mt and it is also called tone modulation because modulating signal is a pure sinusoid or a tone what does it mean? Here, our the message which we need to transmit is also a sinusoidal signal with amplitude B and the shape is sparse, but it has only one component of a frequency, like the uh, which we call the fundamental frequency. It has it doesn't have a harmonics inside. So it means there is a only one, it is called a pure sinusoid or a tone. Tone means only it has a one frequency which is called the fundamental frequency. So this is our message signal and we need to transmit, modulate it as using AM modulation. So what is the maximum value here is, let's go move to the solution. What is the maximum value here? B. And what is the minimum value here? Minus B. So they are symmetric, right? Maximum is same, minimum is same. Like maximum is positive B and the minimum is minus B, right? Opposite sign. Hence, if we need to calculate the modulation index because this is a symmetric case, then mu equals to mass signal peak over the carrier signal peak. So uh, b is equal to from here, b equals to this, this is a typo, this is small b, b equals to mu a, right? b equals to mu a, just multiply mu. And what uh, we have already we know that mt equals to b cos omega mt this is given from here right and let's put the value of b here because we like to write this b in terms of a modulation index so using this here so we have a mu a cos omega mt therefore we know that for amplitude modulation we have a this equation we have seen this and uh, derived this in the previous lecture phi amt it means amplitude modulation is given as a plus mt cos omega cd. This is the general equation of our amplitude modulation. What is this? This is carrier amplitude. This is mass signal amplitude. Let's put the values. So we have 
a which is equal to oh sorry equals to a one plus mu cos omega m t right if we put this value right this value in this equation right what would happen a plus mu a cos omega t if we take a outside then we would have only one here plus mu cos omega m t and this is the area cos omega t so if we plot this one how it would look like so first we have two cases for mu 2.5 right this one and for mu here we have a one so let's first plot for the value of mu when it is equal to 0.5 so mu equals to 0.5 this is the scenario in general you know that the a modulated wave this is a modulated wave has a shape this one like this one right so what we want to highlight here is that only the role of a mu here okay let's discuss so you have a this center line which is zero line right this is your zero line like right? here you have a zero right and a is the dc value right i mentioned in the last lecture a is the dc value it means that this axis is shifted upward for a message signal this message signal so your message signal will start from here right this is your a this is the value of a right so this is a when mu equals to 0.5 so put it there so a this one will be a a into 0.5 right a into 0.5 so what does it mean it means that you can write it similarly as a over 2 right a over 2 so this is your message signal riding on the carrier so this message signal would have a maximum value a by 2 this is look at this from here a by 2 this is from zero axis from this shifted axis we have a a by 2 in this way and also negative direction a by 2 so this also refers to a by 2 as well so you can clearly see that it is not going beyond zero right so invalid detection is possible here right what does it mean in not going beyond zero this can be a case when t is here right and then your message goes high and goes downward so if it goes below the zero this cannot be detected and it will give you an error right so this was the case for mu equals to 0.5 you can clearly notice that it is not reaching the zero axis so it's possible right uh, and the other case is mu equals to 0.1 right this, uh, sorry mu equals to 1 in this case uh, this one is our value of a this one is a for example this is value of a and what is the value of a here in this case if we put 1 so 1 plus a into 1 so here a into 1 it would be equals to a right so here we have from a we have a 0.5 upward 0.5 downward but here a is here so we have a a this direction so this value would also be a a right and a in this direction right it will touch the zero axis so minus a in this direction so you can see that for mu equals to 1 it is also touching the zero axis but not crossing that axis so this modulation is possible as well so this was the discussion and in this example that what how the new affect the modulation of the signal okay let's uh, have uh, another look a uh, modulation index as we mentioned mu equals to 0.5 it is similar in percentage we can call it as a modulation index to the 50% right 50% modulation index it is same so it is your nominal value and it is going 50% up 50% down here not touching and in case mu equals to 100% it means that mu equals to 1 scenario right mu equals to 1 when the modulation index reaches 
that is a modulation depth of 100%, the carrier level falls to 0, look at this, the carrier level falls to 0 at this point, and rise to twice its non-modulated level, right, this is twice like, the general level is this one, it goes upward twice value at this, thus, you know that, in the equation, if you put 1, so plus 1, it will become 2, because, general for A is 1 and the modulation index so it becomes 2. Now let us see the case of over modulation. What is over modulation? In any increase of the modulation index above 1 that is 100% modulation depth causes over modulation. You can see that even if mu equals 2 for example if we select mu equals to 1.2 or 1.5 so, the carrier experience of an 80 phase shape reversal where the carrier level would try to go below, below the zero point. Look at this. Here it goes zero, below the zero, and here it goes above the zero. So, this point distortion will occur. So, the phase reversal gives rise to additional side bands resulting from the phase reversal that extend out in fury to infinity. This can cause serious interference for the viewer if not better. So, the problem which it will give, it will give the high interference. So, here we collectively shown three waves, right? three cases we discussed 50% modulation, 100% modulation, and the last one is the 150% modulation, means mu is equal to 0.5. So, 50% will increase the amplitude of the carrier to 1.5, which is acceptable. You can see that. 0 to 0.5 and 1.5 and the 100 percent will increase its amplitude to 2 it means that 100 percent from 0 to 1 to 2 we have a 100 percent and the case 3 150 percent it will raise it to the 2.5 which is not an acceptable value because this area we have getting the interference so over modulation is not desired and in the communication system so we must select the mu between 0 to so this is the required value, right, based on the situation and the scenario. Okay, now let's move to the sideband and the carrier power. This is the very important term. The reason is that if we are transmitting the signal, it must consume a power. So how much power is consumed by the sidebands and the, how much additional power is consumed by the carrier? Because you know that in amplitude modulation, we are transmitting the extra additional carrier A cos omega CT as a reference signal, right? So, this would have an effect on the transmission power. So, in this uh, slide, we would like to see that what is the effect of the A cos omega CT on our carrier signal, modulated signal. So the advantage of invariant detection in AM has its price. As I mentioned that invariant detection is the cheapest way to detect the signal and it's easy, it has low complexity, so ultimately it has a low price. So in AM, the carrier term does not carry any information, but as we are transmitting the additional carrier A cos omega CT, but it, in reality it is not uh, transmitting any data. So, it is, uh, in other sense, it is wasting the power. So, hence the carrier power is wasted. So, for example, this is our AM signal. It has additional A cos omega CT carrier and these are the side bands which we are sending as a modulated signal. So, message cos omega CT. So, they have an additional carrier term. So, now let us analyze how much power the carrier and the side bands consume. The carrier power we represent Pc is the mean square value A cos omega Ct, which is A square T. So, for carrier, we have a power A square mean square power, which is A square T. The side bands Ps is the power of Mt cos omega Ct, which can be calculated as, which can be given as 0.5 M square T. How this equation came? You can refer to the equation 3.70 of the book. Hence, Pc, we have a carrier power A square over 2 and Ps, if we have a sideband 
power half m square t. Now let's see uh, how it affects the overall system. Sideband and carrier power. So the term to measure the sideband and the carrier power uh, is the power efficiency. Like power efficiency is the term by using which we will be defined by eta. So eta is the useful power over the total power. This is called a power efficiency. It means that the power which we are transmitting for transmitting data is called a useful power. And the total power is the carrier power plus the power used by the sideband signal. The originally net we can call the modulated signal. So the sideband power is the useful power which is m square over 2 right m square over 2 and the carrier power is a square over 2 right and the sideband power similarly m square by 2 so you can see that there are two two in the denominator two two denominator so it will cancel out so in the end we would have only the m square t a square plus m square 2 right considering a tone modulation so let's consider the case of tone modulation it means that only we have a fundamental frequency so measure signal in this case will look like as we already uh, discussed this in the previous slide mu a cos omega mt so let's calculate its power so how it look like m square t equals to mu a so this is your amplitude so mu a square over 2 this is your power so hence using the uh, power efficiency equation this one let's put the values so m square uh, t mu square over 2 right and a square we have a 2 plus mu square here as well right it means uh, put the value of m square t here similarly like mu a square right uh, over 2 and here will be a a square right so by Following it, we will get 2 plus mu square here, mu square here because a a would be cancelled out, right? You can solve, check it mathematically as well. So into 100% to call the to calculate the efficiency. So efficiency increases monotonically with mu, and maximum efficiency occurs at mu equals to 1. For example, if we put mu equals to 1 here, so 1 over 1 plus 2, so 1 over 3, it will become 33%. So it means that we can achieve only a 33% efficiency if we use the highest modulation index which is mu equals to 1. So for tone modulation under the best condition which is the mu 1, only one third of the transmitted power is used for carrying messages. So we can notice from this example that only we have a 33% power is the useful power and the rest of the power which is the 77% is wasted uh, sorry 67 uh, percent is wasted power because uh, it is used for transmitting other signal which is not related to the data so in even in the ideal condition of mu equals to so this is an another example to determine efficiency and the percentage of the total power carried by the side bands right of the am wave for tone modulation when mu equals to 0.5 when mu equals to 0 0.3 here we are uh, looking into the cases when mu equals to 0 0.5 and mu equals to 3 so for mu equals to 0.5 the same equation 0 0.5 put here 0 0.5 here and we will get 11.11 percent .11%. so hence only 11 percent of the total power is in the sideband sideband why we are focusing on the sideband because this is our modulated data portion where we are transmitting the data so if we we have a 0.5 modulation index, so only 11.11% .11 is the useful power, other is wasted in another transmitting carrier than the rest of thing. Similarly, if we use point mu equal to 0.3, put it here, here, two, so we have only a 4.3% useful power of, of the total power, so which we are using for transmitting the useful information. Thank you for listening there. And for question answer section, there will be a separate slot. If you have any questions, then please prepare. And the exact date and time will be communicated to you later on. So please prepare yourself. Thank you for listening.